Let's begin by talking just a little bit about the hardware that we're using and then jump right into taking a look at how we can use the grip pin in ZBrush. So the pen display that we're using here is the uh, Cintiq 22HD and we've got an image of it uh, here. You can see that we have eight express keys on the left hand side of the display and then eight express keys on the right hand side. We have a touch strip which you cannot see here but it's on the back behind the express keys and then a touch strip toggle here. If you have an Intuos you may have a touch ring instead of a touch strip. That is going to function exactly the same way. We also have a few buttons up here which if you're using an Intuos you may not have but they're going to enable us to access our tablet properties. If you do have a tablet then you'll be able to ac access those properties either using one of your express keys if you're using touch you can access it that way or you can also access it just strictly through your control panel. Alright so this is the hardware that we're going to be using. You can see the grip pin here which is going to be pretty similar across all the pen displays and tablets. So the, what we're really going to talk about throughout this course are programming of the express keys and the touch strip and also there's a radial menu that we can, uh, can kind of uh, set up as well. And those are going to be common across our Cintiqs and our Intuos tablets. Okay, So whatever hardware that you have, you should be able to customize it in the same way that we're working here. Alright, so let's go ahead and jump into ZBrush now. Okay. So if you've used ZBrush for any amount of time, it's probably a good bet that you're using some sort of a drawing surface, some sort of a tablet to use it. Okay, ZBrush utilizes the pressure sensitivity of your tablet that enables you to make strokes across your model of varying intensities and varying sizes. So you can come in here with your pen and just draw and sculpt across your model, which is going to be a little bit more difficult if you're using a mouse coming in and trying to do something very fine and, and blend it in, um, you're going to be at full strength. So uh, the pressure sensitivity is a big thing and it's something that you are going to utilize every time you use your uh, pen display or your tablet for the most part. Now there are a few options in here in ZBrush for modifying the way that your pressure sensitivity works. You can come into preferences and there is a sub palette here called tablet. You can see that we are using our tablet. It's activated. And now we have the ability to change our size sensitivity, how the brush size reacts to the pressures, to the uh, pressure, how much pressure is applied. We also have the Z sensitivity and color sensitivity and the lazy pressure, which kind of smooths that out. So you, it, it helps to kind of avoid some of those blobby effects that you get when you're using your pen. Kind of um, sometimes you can kind of skip a little bit, or you can make an incorrect stroke, kind of jiggle a little bit, and so that kind of evens some of that out. We also have the tablet embed, which will change the embed based on your pressure sensitivity, which we're not using right now because it's set to zero. And then we also have a color gradient here, which we'll look at in a second. Now within each brush, there are also tablet settings. So if we go into the brush, you can see here is a sub palette for tablet pressure. This is in our standard brush. So we can open that up. and Let's take a look at some of these. You can see there's size, Z intensity, RGB intensity, brush mod, and brush embed. So let's just take a look at size. Okay, so we've got one of our curve boxes here that we're familiar with in ZBrush. Now the way that it's working right now is at lower pressure, we're having we're going to have a smaller brush size, a smaller brush stroke. So at a low pressure, it's a smaller size and at more pressure it's a larger size. So let's say that for some reason we want to actually have a very low or, or uh, at the low pressure we want to have a large size so a very large shape but as we start to press harder on our pen we want to actually create a smaller finer stroke. Well, what we can do is just reverse these. So we can go ahead and drag that up and drag this down and let me go ahead and increase this a little bit so here I'm just sculpting very lightly around the surface and then up here I'm pushing really hard so you can sort of blend that together light to a hard stroke and you kind of reverse that behavior now of your grip pen okay so you do have options for that within each brush 
If you want to take that back to the default behavior, you can go ahead and just reset that. And that'll reset that back down. And there are options in there for the Z intensity as well. So if you want your intensity to be really strong when you're pushing down really hard, which is the way it's set, versus you know not much intensity when you're actually pushing very lightly, you can change all of that within those options. You can also just choose to use the global settings, and you can see that button here. And those global settings are what we looked at earlier. Okay, another thing that we can do is to actually use a color gradient. So if we turn this all the way up, what's going to happen is that we're going to actually be able to blend between our two different colors here. So we can go ahead and select kind of a red, and we'll just do this so that we can be, it, it'll be very obvious. So we'll do a, like a red and green, or maybe we could do like a, an orange. Okay, and let's kind of move around here. And so what's going to happen here, we set this to 1. So at a very light pressure, it's going to be the secondary color, which is green. Okay, so just painting very lightly. And then as we push harder, you can see the color start to shift to the orange. Okay, go ahead and take that down a little bit. So then we can come in here and just really lightly start to Maybe blend that together. Okay, maybe coming in here. And just with changes in the pressure, okay, we can start to change how that color is applied. Okay, and just start to blend that in. Get a little bit of variation in there. We could use uh, like black and white if you wanted to and blend in making a gray. So if you had black and then on this one, uh, you had white, white and black here. So then you've got black at a very low pressure. Increase the pressure a little bit. You start to get a lot lighter. You can see how you're making that gradient now. Light pressure up to a very hard pressure. Okay, so the pressure sensitivity is something you're going to be using a lot in ZBrush and it's probably something you've been taking advantage of already to this point. Now some of the things that you may not have been taking advantage of is the ability for our pen displays and our tablets to actually offload some of the keyboard shortcuts and common actions that we do onto the pen display or tablet so that we don't have to keep reaching over to the keyboard, um, losing focus on what it is that we're doing. Now, one of the, the ways that we can start to assign some of these actions and, and hotkey combinations is actually on the grip pen itself. So let's activate our tablet properties. So I've got mine open. I'm just going to go ahead and drag them over. Now you can see that we have an area for tablet, which has our current tablet, the Cintiq 22 HD. We have tool, so we have the functions, which are the buttons on our display, and then we also have the grip pen. And then we have application. So right now we're working on all applications. So anything we do with this pen display is going to be located under here. All right, so we want to customize our grip pen. So we want to select the grip pen, okay? And we also want to make a custom application. So when we're in ZBrush, we want this grip pen to behave in a certain way. So let's go ahead and hit this plus, and I'm going to choose ZBrush, and let's go ahead and say OK to that. So now we're here on the ZBrush application, and we can start to customize our pen. So we can customize the pressure, so we can test that pressure out, and we can decide, OK, I want it to be a little bit more firm, so I'm going to have to push a little bit harder, or I want it to be a little bit softer. And all these things are going to be really up to you as far as how you like to work. Okay, now what I want to focus on here are these two buttons for the side switch. So on your grip pen, you're going to have where your index finger rests, you're going to have that switch. So you've got a basically a button that you can press up at the front, and then you can press the back portion of the button. And those, both of those will do, do two different things. Now this is going to tell us what it's currently assigned to. So the front of our switch is set to right click, and the back is set to double click. Okay, now for working in ZBrush, one of the things that we can do is offload maybe some of those uh, modifier keys that we're going to be using. So we use Control, we use Alt, and we use Shift a lot in ZBrush for moving around, for smoothing, for masking, for changing the visibility of the different meshes. And so we can start to assign those uh, to these different keys. Now I actually want to maybe keep the right click ability because in ZBrush you do have the ability to right click and, and bring up some options. So I'm going to go ahead and actually make that the back. 
So in order to change our assignment, we'll go ahead and just click on this little drop down. And here you can see we have a bunch of different options in here for what we want to set this to. I just want to set it to a right click. So at the very top, you'll see clicks. Let's go in and change this to right click. Okay. Now for the front of the pen, I'm going to go ahead and change this. And I want to be able to smooth uh, while I'm actually sculpting. Okay, and I want to just be able to do this right on the pin rather than having to reach over to the keyboard and hit shift. So in this case, I'm going to add in here a modifier. Okay, so it's not going to be a keystroke, it's going to actually be a modifier. And if we open that up, you can see we have different options for the types of modifiers that we want to add here. And so I want to actually make this the shift key. So when I hold down whatever button I have selected, in this case it's the front of my side switch here, then it'll act like shift is being pressed on the keyboard and I can smooth out my geometry. So we'll go ahead and hit OK on that. So you can see now it's telling us what it's actually assigned to. So let's go ahead and move this off and let's take a look here at our example. I'll go ahead and move around. Let's go to Z add. We'll turn off RGB. Okay. And let me actually take this, well, let's take this geometry down just a little bit. I'll take this down a little. Okay. And so now I'm going in and just clicking on here to sculpt out some detail. And now all I'm going to do is hold down the front of the switch. Okay. So holding that down, you can see it's changed to blue. And you can see over here that that's actually changing to our smooth. So it's behaving just as if I were to do this. I'm hitting the shift key now on my keyboard. So it's doing the exact same thing. So now what I can do is go in and sculpt and without even moving my hand, uh, moving my eyes at all, I can hit shift and start to smooth that back out. Okay. So you can start to come in here and sculpt, smooth out that without moving your hands at all. Okay. All you're doing is just slightly shifting your finger. Okay. Now these are just suggestions as far as the actual assignments go. I want you to learn how to actually make the assignments, but as for what you actually assign to them, that can be a little bit flexible because everyone's going to work a little bit differently. So I find the ability to come in here and actually smooth this out without having to move either hand. Uh, my other hand is just resting on the side of the Cintiq, and I'm not having to reach over for any sort of a, a keyboard shortcut or anything to smooth out the sculpt. Okay. Now, if you wanted to, you could come in and start to add, in addition to shift, you could add maybe alt or control, but I actually want to add those as express keys on the side so I can kind of use everything in combination because there are some things where you need to, to actually um, use multiple modifier keys at the same time. And so I'm just trying to organize it a little bit more. All right. So take a look here in your tablet properties under the grip pin. I'd make a new application for whatever it is that you're working in and then assign those keys something that makes sense to you. In my case, I want to be able to avoid having to reach over and hit shift to smooth out my geometry. So I've assigned that as a modifier okay, to the front of this button on the grip pin.